Netflix, Max, Disney Plus? Who needs them? Turns out you can get some of the greatest movies of all time on YouTube, and it won't cost you a penny. Though most of the dialogue in The Fifth Element is in English, and the cast boasts a number of major English-language movie stars, it's actually a French film. The movie was directed by globally renowned French director Luc Besson and produced by the French company Gaumont. The Fifth Element's country of origin is worth noting when discussing its track record at American award shows, which have historically favored American-produced films in most major categories. For example, at the 70th Academy Awards in 1998, The Fifth Element was only nominated for Best Sound Effects Editing, which it lost to James Cameron's Titanic. However, at that year's Caesar Awards, France's preeminent award ceremony for film, it was nominated in eight categories, including Best Director and Best Film. At other ceremonies around the world, The Fifth Element was consistently recognized for its visual effects, scooping Best Special Effects at the BAFTAs. Curiously enough, Besson, Mila Jovovich, and Chris Tucker all received nominations at the 1997 Stinker's Bad Movie Awards, though none of them won in their respective categories. Still, despite struggling during award season, The Fifth Element has since become recognized as the ultimate sci-fi cult classic, and it's more than worth two hours of your time. If you're in the mood for a bittersweet coming-of-age story, YouTube arguably has no better choice than the perks of being a wallflower. The film stars Logan Lerman, Emma Watson, and Ezra Miller, who play high school students in the early 90s struggling to cope with the complex emotional issues that so often arise at that age. It was written and directed by Stephen Chbosky, who adapted it from his 1999 novel of the same name. Though less famous than their co-stars at the time, Miller drew much of the attention during award seasons with their portrayal of a gay high school student, earning wins from a number of academies and film institutions. It is also thanks to its LGBTQ subplot that the perks of being a wallflower won the GLAAD Media Award for Outstanding Film. To this day, it's remembered as one of the highlights of Ezra Miller's career, as opposed to, well, you know. No! The film also performed notably well at prominent popular vote awards ceremonies, at which films are honored based on votes from viewers online. It was recognized as the best drama film of the year by the audiences of both the People's Choice Awards and Teen Choice Awards, the latter of which also recognized Lerman and Watson with acting honors. One year before Back to the Future, filmmaker Robert Zemeckis brought audiences to a radically different world with 1984's Romancing the Stone. This movie would quickly be overshadowed by the latter entry in Zemeckis' filmography, but the premise has remained surprisingly arresting to this day, both to audiences and Hollywood executives. Romancing the Stone follows a novelist who suddenly finds herself at the center of a real-life adventure, alongside a man who bears a striking resemblance to the protagonist from her stories. The best time I've ever had. Never been anybody's best time before. At the 42nd Golden Globes in 1985, Romancing the Stone beat four other films to win Best Comedy or Musical, including Beverly Hills Cop and Ghostbusters. The only other award it was nominated for that evening was Best Actress in the same category, which Kathleen Turner won. She also won an award for her performance at the Los Angeles Critics Association Awards and was nominated at both the National Society of Film Critics Awards and the Jupiter Awards. Michael Douglas and Zemeckis himself were also nominated for Jupiters, though neither won. In terms of the Oscars, Romancing the Stone was only nominated for one Academy Award, receiving a nod in the Best Film Editing category. Though he's now best known as the star of Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy, Tobey Maguire was once a young actor making his way in Hollywood. During this period in his career, he co-starred in the 1998 fantastical comedy Pleasantville alongside the also up-and-coming Reese Witherspoon. The pair played a brother and sister who get pulled into the bland and literally colorless world of a 1950s sitcom, with their modern sensibilities coming into conflict with, and eventually influencing, the stagnant society. The film was written and directed by Gary Ross, who would later go on to helm the first Hunger Games film in 2012. Pleasantville was released to considerable critical acclaim, particularly for its distinct visual appeal. At the 71st Academy Awards in 1999, it was nominated in three categories – Best Art Direction slash Set Direction, Best Costume Design, and Best Original Dramatic Score. And although it didn't manage to snag any Oscars that year, Joan Allen took home a number of other awards for playing the repressed Parker family matriarch Betty. Her honors included a Saturn Award, a Critics' Choice Award, and a Satellite Award. The Saturn Awards also honored McGuire with the award for Best Performance by a Younger Actor. A classic romantic comedy if there ever was one, Notting Hill would be a safe choice for almost any viewer looking for something easy and satisfying to watch, even if they aren't always partial to films within this genre. 
The film stars Hugh Grant as Will Thacker, a British bookshop owner who unexpectedly finds himself in a whirlwind on-and-off relationship with an American movie star. The plot is mostly comforting rom-com fluff, scripted in such an undeniably charming way that it could come from no screenwriter but Richard Curtis. Can I stay a bit longer? Stay forever. Notting Hill won a ton of awards in the UK, including the BAFTA Audience Award in 2000. Grant and Julia Roberts drew several nominations in the categories of Best Actor and Actress respectively, as did Reese Evans who played Will's chaotic and disheveled roommate Spike. Evans was nominated for Best Supporting Actor at that year's BAFTAs, though he lost to Jude Law for his role in The Talented Mr. Ripley. Grant and Roberts, meanwhile, earned nods at the Golden Globe Awards, as did the film itself for Best Musical or Comedy, though it ultimately lost out to Toy Story 2. By now, Train to Busan is well known among horror fans around the world as a not-so-hidden gem in the zombie apocalypse subgenre. Directed by Yan Sang ho the film begins when a viral outbreak occurs on South Korea's high-speed railway. Tense, tragic, and packed with all the action anyone could ask for from the genre and then some, it isn't hard to see why Train to Busan became a hit. Train to Busan was met with a warm reception globally and recognized with dozens of nominations from multiple countries. In South Korea, it was nominated for four Beck Sang Art Awards, with Yeon winning Best New Director and Kim Yui Sung winning Best Supporting Actor. It earned over twice as many nominations at the 2016 Blue Dragon Awards too, taking home the Audience Choice Award and the Best Technical Award. Film festivals and academies in Spain, Canada, and the United Kingdom awarded Train to Busan with various honors too. In the United States, it was nominated for a Saturn Award for Best Horror Film, and it also won a Fangoria Chainsaw Award for Best Foreign Language Film. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind stars Jim Carrey as a man who impulsively decides to undergo a procedure that will erase all memory of his longtime romantic partner. During the procedure, he finds himself reliving their relationship in reverse, having his decision to forget her challenged as his happiest memories of her begin to slip away. What do we do? Enjoy it. Eternal Sunshine won the award for Best Original Screenplay at the 77th Academy Awards in 2005. Winslet was also nominated for Best Performance by an Actress in a Leading Role, though she lost to Million Dollar Baby star Hilary Swank. While he wasn't nominated for an Oscar, Carey was nominated for a Golden Globe, as were the screenwriters and Winslet. Despite being overlooked by the major bodies, Carey triumphed at a number of other awards shows that year, including the International Cinephile Society Awards and the San Diego Film Critics Society Awards. You've probably already seen at least one scene from Downfall. Since 2006, a climactic scene from the German historical drama has been spread across the internet as content creators from all around the world continue to edit satirical subtitles over a tense conversation between Adolf Hitler and his generals. While Downfall may well be remembered by most as the source of one of the internet's most enduring memes, this has drawn attention from the fact that the film is staggeringly impressive in its own right. This tale of Hitler's final days in a war-torn Berlin was nominated for Best Foreign Language Feature at several international film festivals and foreign film awards, including the 77th Academy Awards. It won that same category at the British Independent Film Awards. Bruno Ganz was also widely lauded for his performance in the film, earning various acting nominations and taking home the award for Actor of the Year from the London Critics Circle Film Awards. Known for his tense and often angry thrillers, director David Fincher surprised fans in 2008 with The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, a romantic drama adapted from F. Scott Fitzgerald's short story about a man who ages in reverse. It's not about how well you play, it's how you feel about what you play. At the 81st Academy Awards, Benjamin Button led proceedings with a whopping 13 nominations, just two nominations shy of breaking the all-time record. Despite this, Benjamin Button actually lost the vast majority of the Oscars for which it was nominated, with Danny Boyle's Slumdog Millionaire dominating most categories that evening. That said, the movie was nominated an impressive 160 times for various awards across the globe. Among the cast, Tilda Swinton and Taraji P. Henson took home acting honors for multiple ceremonies. British screenwriter Peter Morgan made his name writing about British politics and the royal family, most recently and prominently with the Netflix series The Crown. Long before that series began streaming, however, Morgan made a feature film called The Queen, the second entry in his unofficial trilogy of films chronicling the political environment of the UK under Prime Minister Tony Blair. Blair is portrayed by Michael Sheen in all three films, and here, he comes into conflict with Queen Elizabeth over how they should handle the tragic death of Princess Diana. 
The Queen was nominated in six categories at the 79th Academy Awards in 2007, with Helen Mirren taking home Best Performance by an Actress in a Leading Role. Why do they hate us so much? Not us, dear. What? Hmm? Mirren swept most Best Actress categories for the remainder of the season, coming out on top at the BAFTAs, the Critics' Choice Awards, and the Golden Globes. Morgan himself was awarded Best Screenplay at the latter, while director Stephen Frears also got a nomination. Directed by acclaimed filmmaker Paul Thomas Anderson, There Will Be Blood follows a ruthless oilman on a dark quest to amass as much wealth as possible by any means necessary. With each moral sacrifice comes tragedy and human cruelty almost beyond imagination. It's certainly not a film for the faint of heart, and one best entered into with as little knowledge of the plot as possible. At the 80th Academy Awards in 2008, There Will Be Blood was nominated in eight categories, tying for most nominations that year with the Coen Brothers' hit No Country for Old Men. Though it was nominated for Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Adapted Screenplay, it lost all three to its award season rival. Daniel Day-Lewis did take home the award for Best Actor, and the movie also scooped an Oscar for Best Cinematography. There Will Be Blood performed similarly at other award ceremonies that year, with Day-Lewis sweeping almost all the Best Actor categories for his powerhouse performance as Daniel Plainview. To be or not to be, that is the question. If you're in the mood for a real classic, YouTube has you covered. Many of the free options currently available on the site are adaptations of plays by William Shakespeare, most notable among them the 1948 film Hamlet. The movie features renowned thespian Laurence Olivier in the role of the titular Prince of Denmark who, spoiler alert, embarks on a killing spree after the murder of his father by his uncle. Olivier, who also directed Hamlet, won both Best Actor and Best Picture, the latter being a somewhat historic win, as it was the first non-American film to do so. It was fourth time lucky for Olivier too, who had scored previous Best Actor nominations for 1939's Wuthering Heights, 1940's Rebecca, and 1946's Henry V. Sadly, he wasn't able to attend the ceremony due to his theater commitments across the pond, though he later celebrated his victory at a specially organized event in London.